Hello everybody, Rambler Guy here. Welcome back to the channel. Some more Crusader Kings 3 goodness here. With uh, hopefully one day the Angevins, uh, if we survive long enough. First of all, I want to thank everybody that has watched and liked and commented on episode 1 of this series. It's good to be back doing this along with all the other content here on the channel. Uh, both strategy gaming and tabletop role-playing. I'm, I'm having fun with all this, this new direction, not being ultra niche, doing what I kind of enjoy doing, and I'm glad you're along for the ride. Now, there are a lot of great comments. Um, one I want to address right away, and that is schedule. I don't really have a set schedule. I'm going to try to get two to three of these out a week, kind of Tuesday through Thursday, Occasionally, maybe I'll have extra ones, um, and there's some weeks where it's just going to be less content, just because of, A, I'm not going to put that kind of stress on myself, and B, I do have other things in my life, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, and this is just a side gig hobby fun. So, anyway, uh, one other comment was, uh, lucky you didn't get uh, killed day one. Because apparently that does happen occasionally when you start with uh, someone from Anjou, specifically Folk. So, uh, yay, he survived day one. In fact, he survived almost an entire year. So we'll see how that continues here in the game. So looking over our current situation, of course, we're still not endorsed by the bishop. We can station some men at arms. Um, let's see here. Let's see. We will station them. And really, we don't have any other choice but tour. Uh, that's, that's really the only place we could put them. What that gives us is a plus 4.4 on damage, because Realm Capital plus 10% plus plus and Moat plus 10%. And then plus 4.8 additional toughness, because of Mot, Moat, Mota, and the Realm Capital. So that does help us there. Do need to add some more regiments, but right now, uh, kind of lacking the funds. So, you know, wait until a little bit of extra money comes in before we can do anything really there. The Fox of Tour needs a successor, apparently. We need to recruit some more knights to court right now. We, we just don't have enough knights. We still need to get there. Uh, our inheritance really hasn't changed much. Well, we can negotiate a few alliances, so let's take a look at our Prince Robert the Old. Still, mm, still will not accept the alliance. Joffrey would, but again, that's not really something we want to do. It looks like Joffrey is out, and he has a regent in his place. That's good to know. Now, again, Joffrey, this is... This is the title that we want. Oh, it looks like he's almost back home, actually. You can see him walking around here. Let's take a look here. What what can we do? We could murder him. And successful is 5% chance. That would take an incredibly long time. He's still not married. Ideally, somehow he demises over time. And we're just really kind of building still at this point. I'll unpause the game and see what comes towards Folk. I mean, of course, his wife is pregnant. Very, very important. Uh, once we get an heir in, that changes the game a little bit, kind of the feel of it, because then there's a little bit of extra safety. And as long as Joffrey doesn't get married and produce an heir, things are looking good for Folk. Okay, a rusty tool. Peering through the dusty murk of the armory, my gaze travels over multiple different weapons of war. A pair of battered leather greaves, a recently sharpened sword, a spear with a worn haft, a rusty farming tool? I pick up the farming implement. Perhaps it has been lumped in unknowingly with the weapons I heft the tool, examining its curiously curved sickle-like blade, and I give it an experimental swing at a nearby hauberk. The blade pierces the mail, scattering a few iron rings across the floor. Hmm. I wonder if this can be repurposed. You investigate ways to turn this tool into a weapon. All right, choices, choices. 
Taking the small blade out into the midday sun, I inspect it more closely. The blade tapers to a point at one end and disappears into the tang at the other, leaving a length of slightly rusty but still sharp iron in between. The kink at the blade's head gives the implement a wicked curve to it, useful for cutting through shrubs, you'd think, or maybe finding gaps in armor. It's clear this could be repurposed as a weapon of war, but the question remains exactly what guys said weapons would take. All right, let's take a look here. If you straighten out the blade, it could be a useful dagger. Um, so it looks like 76%. Uh, possible outcome, a rudimentary dagger from the tool. Perhaps if we mounted it on the other end of the spear. So 50-50 chance, this could be turned into a rudimentary halberd. Why don't we just leave it as is? You hone the blade. Well, I'm gonna try, let's make a dagger out of this thing. All right, as a lord, I'm not exactly well versed with the process of actually modifying a weapon of war. Despite my enthusiasm, it quickly became clear that I'll need some expert guidance. I call the holding somewhat harassed looking blacksmith, Evrard, who muttered something I didn't quite catch about rulers and their pet projects. And after a day or so of filing and honing my work is complete. The formerly curved blade has been straightened out, its shortened blade leading to a tapering point with a beveled groove running down to the flat of the blade. It's not a pretty weapon, but a weapon nonetheless. It's perfect. It's even better than my, than my one. Let's see. Uh, it's perfect. You gain makeshift dagger artifact and 100 martial lifestyle experience, or it's even better than my one. It's perfect. Your newborn son is your player heir, and it automatically comes in as Joffrey. This was actually a request from uh, one of the viewers to name the firstborn son Joffrey, Joffrey d'Anjou, who is technically actually the, I guess, the ancestor of the Plantagenets in that sense. So praise Saint Brigid Ermengard has given birth to a perfect little son. One day, child, you will carry on my legacy. What name would you add? Of course, may you grow to be strong and wise. My son Geoffrey d'Anjou has been born in with that. We have a player heir that is not our brother, which is of course very, very important. We've got another knight that's come. Let's see, um, anything else? You're in line to inherit titles. Second in line for County of Anjou. And third in line, first in line for County of Anjou. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. We got some more knights coming in. Let's see here. Is there anyone worth... We can't recruit to court because we don't have the money to recruit these guys to our court, unfortunately. Let's see what, uh, what we can do here. We can still search for Caravan Master, Physician. We can pay homage to our liege. Um, or we can petition our liege for a gift or service. There's really nothing there really want to do. Um, still our bishop's not a big fan. We're, we're still working on this scheme. And hopefully that'll work out and then we get endorsed by our bishop. We can shift things into a new direction after that. Uh, maybe getting on the good side of the King of France? I think that would be a good direction to go for folk. Neighboring ruler won a war. So this is thing we've been looking for. Your neighbor, King William, has won against Harold Godwinson, nobleman from the Landre in the Norman conquest of England. So there you have it. England is now on the continent and in France, and right next door to us. So, oh, looks like Robert Cortos. Uh, he was rather roughed up, it looks like. And there we have the King of England, who has a lot of children. Um, you know, it wouldn't be bad to marry into royalty, but right now, Unfortunately, we're just a count, so there's still a long ways to go here. We've got powerful Aquitaine to the south, which is always a danger. Of course, we've got Toulouse, and then we have England in the north, but thankfully, thankfully, we are protected by the King of France. So, tourney troubles. 
As Kara, I've been obliged to attend the local jousting tournament. The contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't start for at least another hour. Baron Orson of Bray is here, and as always, is being an insufferable lout. His constant complaining is making everyone even more miserable than normal. On the other hand, this could be a good opportunity to eavesdrop on the conversations of other attendees. Push Orson to the horse's water trough to liven things up. Mm, don't really need to do that. I mean, maybe. He's arbitrary, and that would be funny. And gain some prestige. I'm sure someone here knows something. Discover a random secret. I've wasted enough time on this disaster. So we're going to push him. What's our... Do we really have anything here? He's a fellow vassal. I mean, there's really... There's nothing to be gained. That's not strategic. Folk is a schemer as well as a warrior. So we're not going to do that. See if we can find a random secret. An unworthy challenge. At first I thought the simple footman, a fool, for stepping onto the training field. However, the battle proved more hard fought than I expected, and it gradually became clear that he would be unable to stop his wild and vicious strikes from hurting me. Disarming him suddenly became a matter of life and death. Tried not to show my relief when his sword finally hit the ground. I could use more people like you. Let's look at Tibul. Uh, zealous adventure. Um, you gain, let's see, Tibul joins your court. You gain 30 opinion of Tibul for 20 years. Tibul gains 30 opinion of you. This peasant and my soldiers will get a lecture on honor. I strike him down where he stands. And do I kill him? Let's see. Intrigue, martial. He's ambitious, deceitful, greedy, and he's arbitrary. Anything else here? He's an honorable soul. Scully, so an honorable soul. I could use more people like you. Folk is honorable, and maybe he can use him to his benefit. We'll have to wait and see. We are going to send our Bishop Onfroy to the County of Anjou to press a claim there. Now, we already have the claim on the Duchy of Anjou, but not the county, so... We're going to see where this goes. If need be, we'll go to war with Joffrey. He is currently allied with Countess Hildegard, so... Looks like... Really, you know, not much difference there. How does a murder scheme look right now? 90%. So not very advantageous, but Folk definitely wants to get rid of his brother. That hasn't changed. That is the the first, like I said, we're going to look at the micro, not the macro here. In the micro level, it's very simple. We need to gain the County of Anjou, and it might just be down to biding our time. Meanwhile, we've got a new Marshall Perk. Just did want to show you, we do have our makeshift dagger as an artifact, so that's exciting, I guess. All right, an available perk. So, hard rule, dread gain plus 20%, siege progress against revolts plus 50%, faction military power threshold for vassals plus 20. A man's home, controlled territory defender advantage plus five. Soldiers of lesser fortune, so mercenaries get cheaper, enduring hardships, fort level plus one. I think we're gonna go down this route because eventually war will come to folk, or folk will bring war to somebody. And once that happens, uh, being stronger at home defensively, definitely an advantage. Let's pick, for the fo for Nicholas, the Fox of Tour. Let's look for a successor. Um, let's see, successor requirements, serves as a knight, highest held title is less or equal to barony rank, prowess is eight or above, at least one of these. Administrator stewardship is 15 or above. Let's see, a knight who fulfills it. Um, six months, sure. Seek where the accolade successor will be unavailable for two years. Sure, we'll spend that money. We'll take a look at how that all works and find a successor to the Fox of Tours. Right, let's take a look at a few of the positions we could fill here. We could look at Master of the Hunt. Monthly court grandeur change goes from plus 10 to plus 20%. Court grandeur bonus plus 0 to plus 2. Hunt success chance and frequency of sightings increases with aptitude. So, Thibaut de Villiers 
would be an excellent choice. So we're going to appoint him, and it's not too high of a cost to have him there. Other than that, I mean, as far as high cost goes, these are rather expensive. I think we're going to not go with another one here. We'll just keep that kind of ticking along for now. Oh, looks like an esteemed knight joins your court, and an accolade successor has been found. So, you can appoint the successor. The successor would be Stefan. Or Stefan. Stefan. Stefan Longspey. Oh, um, man, still just waiting for our bishop to, to get there. Uh, trying to save a little bit of money, because maybe if this claim comes in and we can gather it, then we can go to war with our brother, uh, eventually. And once we build up our military, build up our coffers a little bit, and just in general kind of progress the game a little bit. I mean, these starting his account tends to be a little bit slower at the beginning. Uh, plus, we're waiting for our child to get a little bit older so we can get into some marriage alliances. Folk is a constant schemer and warrior, so he's just biding his time. Looks like war has broken out in Aquitaine. They are a, a liberty war. Ah, interesting. Onfroy has been swayed. Excellent. So now we've got some extra income coming in from the church holdings. Slowly. Very, very slowly. But that's exactly what I wanted to see. Let's see. Our spy master definitely wants to uh, sway her. It's going to take a little bit, but I uh, we'll want everyone kind of on Folk's side here, especially a spy master. Having a spy master who doesn't like you uh, always is a little bit, little bit dangerous for my liking. Oh, brother's been imprisoned. King Philip imprisoned Count Joffrey. Interesting, interesting. That is truly... Interesting. I'd like to know why our brother brother got imprisoned. Anyway, we look like we're going to have our claim fabrication here come through relatively soon. See if we got the money to even take it. Now we do have Count Folk of Terrain. Greetings here on Freud. See it done. 69. Uh, don't have the cash right now. I just can't do it. I'm going to have to start all over again, which is really annoying. But there's not much else we can do right now. I just really don't want to go into debt at this stage because, ugh, I mean, we're building wealth really, really slowly. So I'm just going to have to get back there and start that entire fabrication process over. That's fine. So be it. Uh, we've We've got time. Let's look, our uh, development in the county is growing, so that's really good. That definitely helps. Liege Regency ended. Uh, King Philippe is no longer sharing power with Duke Baudouin. Baudouin of Flanders. I'm going to take a quick look at the dynasty tree here for the House Anjou. Joffrey, so far, is the only child in line. Countess Hildegard, she has a child. And we've got a few more here. Uh, got two half-brothers and a half-sister. Uh, Joffrey is really the main one there. If we look at Dynasty Head, it is Joffrey. So once Joffrey is gone, then Folk will be the head of the dynasty there. And we can start working on the different legacies as well for the dynasty at that point, which is obviously really, really important. Um, if we look at French culture, King Philippe is the head there. We can diverge the culture. We can change a little bit. So, I mean, this is something we can, of course, do. We've got Turanian... Um, we can change the names here if we wish to, but uh, that's that's really nothing at this point that I am interested in doing. The Deer of Loch, of Lox, Vlosh, my master of the hunt, Thibault, brings word of beasts spotted in my realm. 
I'm hearing much talk uh, from the county of Touraine. It is said there are excellent processes of hunting thereabouts, with many a worthy stag seen roaming the woodlands. Interesting. So game sighting for three years. Nothing immediately will happen, mainly because I'm not spending money on anything that's not grabbing this claim. That is, that is the main focus right now. So the deer sighted here, we could go to hunt, but that's 60 gold. And I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, need this claim first, and then we can push our brother. Start working the alliance game a little bit. Uh, a ruler in the making. There's no end to the opinions and wants of my son and heir, Joffrey. Half of the time, he is trying to tell me what to do instead of the other way around. Formidable, formidable or aggravating. It's fine to walk the line. So, Joffrey is bossy. My beloved mother. It has not escaped my notice that my mother, Duchess Amengard, is a very good-looking woman. The way she smiles and takes a bite of an apple never fails to make... Wait, my mother? Are these normal feelings to have towards a mother? She's my mother. Get a grip, folk. Uh, yeah. Uh, get a grip, dude. That's... No. No, no, we aren't the Lannisters. I have prowled through my documents, and there we have it. See it done. 69 gold. We will spend the money. We now have the claim. Um, and you can declare war on him. This is another little thing that's now been updated that I'm a big fan of. You can see he has a stronger army. Immediately here, we can already see. We don't have to go into any other screen to see where things sit in terms of military power. So I really, really like that. I'd love to be able to get an alliance going here, but we're just not there. Okay, a new martial perk. Excellent. So here we're going to do enduring hardships. So enemy occupations do not lower control, and we get a fort level plus one. That's really, really good. So we're going to continue along those lines. Take a quick look at... Our child, he is three years old. Let's see, which way is he leaning? Stewardship. And learning and martial. It's still very, very early to make that decision, but we do have the possibility here to go against Joffrey, who's now opinion has dropped. But uh, we first need a few new alliances before we can do anything there. But it could also not be needed. Uh, let's take a look here. Murder scheme, 19%. Still not looking good to kill him. But uh, we'll just continue on the path we have chosen so far. And one thing we can do is we can pass limited crown authority law. So I think we're going to pass that law right now. Kind of move into that direction bit by bit by bit. Succession... Yeah, there's, I mean, there's really nothing nothing changing there right now, but slowly but surely inching our way forward in progress while still waiting for our brother to either kick the bucket or for us to kick his bucket. It looks like Acquaintance Duke Guillaume has created uh, independence faction against none other than the King of France. So the Duchy of Toulouse is looking to gain independence from France. Um... Definitely have to keep an eye on that one, without a doubt. Here in the meantime, really nothing's changed. He won't accept it because the opinion's poor. Uh, his current alliance amount is very high. Difference in military strength. Unfortunately, that's just not going to go in there. And our stepfather, well, he just doesn't like us. He's not, he's not a fan. Let's put it this way. Um, difference in rank is a huge issue here. Uh, that minus 30, and there's no way to change that right now. Military strength difference is a big problem. Your current amount of alliances, we've got one. His opinion, if we get rid of the opinion, and we can't change it enough, uh, to, to make a big enough difference. Um, before we go into war here... With Anjou, if we decide to have a brother conflict in that sense, we need to build greater alliances, and it's just not happening. Aquitaine, in the meantime, allied with the king of Poland, 
and still has that Liberty War. Negotiate alliance. Uh, my dear brother, you uh, propose to formalize the ties that already bind us. I don't want one. Um, I'm going to decline that. I don't want an alliance with somebody that I eventually would kind of like to conquer, but we just don't have the military strength right now to do it. So it's a matter of patience. This is really what's intriguing about this is just the patience we have to bring to the forefront. Let's take a look and see if we can betroth our heir Joffrey to anyone to kind of help this along a little bit. As we look through here, and really nothing beyond baronies that would help with it. So, yeah, there's, there's nobody there that we could betroth him to to kind of push that forward and gain a solid alliance to, to at least give us some bit of a chance against our brother who does have the larger military force right now. We can see here a Polish army coming into Aquitaine. And again, keeping an eye on macro politics, macro geopolitics, but... You know, we're, we're focused very much on the minor here. All right, we've got another invitation to go to a festival. Um, might as well do it, you know. Let's go to the Duke's Festival, the Duchy of Juland. That is a long way. Well, you may not arrive to the festival in time. Okay, heresy, Cathars in province. Duke Bertrand of Provence has announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to Catharism. Having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests, the nobles of Provence no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true. As Cathars, they believe their new faith properly aligns with the will of God and they are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. What twisted mockery of faith is this? You know, they do have some good points. No. Nope, no Cathars here. We can't, can't do it. Sorry, decline the invitation. We're not going to go all the way to, um, really embrace this heresy. Okay. All the way to Denmark for this. Okay. So now let's look at our council real quick. We swayed her. I think it's time to sway. Let's sway our... We go with somebody internal and sway them or should we try to sway our liege king philippe uh can we sway him 34 percent? that's a waste you know what we're not gonna worry about him what about the king of england is there anything we can do there Sway, yeah, that's also not working. You know, we're just going to work on our own vassals and members of our court. So we're going to sway him. 84% chance. May as well just focus on getting, getting things right at home first before we worry about the greater world beyond our borders. As we're still waiting for our brother to, you know, finally... Pass on, as it were. Speaking of our brother, he has married. He has actually married. So if he has a child, that does change things dramatically. Uh, what does a murder scheme look like? Still, still not working. What if we murder his wife? Yep, nope, not going to work either. So unfortunately, it's not looking great. Uh, Count Raoul's hunt. We are invited. Pause this. Let's join Count Raoul's hunt. Uh, you have to leave within 18 days. Sure. Let's go on a hunt with Count Raoul. Where is Count Raoul? The County of Barry. Oh, it's right next door. All right. Let us join the hunt. Let's see. Travel options. What about a caravan master? Do we have a good one? Stefan. We'll appoint Stefan as our caravan master. And I think then we can just head off and join and go hunting. So of course, we have a regency now. 
My acquaintance, Count Royal, is hosting a hunt in Isodun, and time has come for us to depart. I should be able to proudly represent the house of Danjou. Hunting with birds is a most noble pursuit, one I am sure to excel at. I hope this goes well. Fourteen days to destination. A knight errant. It is known that the people of Valence seem to profess a special devotion towards their knights and their legends. My lord, the knight says, bowing his head, it is most fortunate that you and I came to meet at this crossroad, for I am in search of a marvelous fountain which water is said to cure all illnesses. If you were to help me in my quest, I shall pay homage to you. Guy quickly interrupt. Wait, my lord, I know this knight. It is André. So what about André? Cautious leader. Whoa. Look at that martial ability. Our stubborn, brilliant strategist. He's gallant. She'll never leave a knight unattended. Lead the way. So, why not say 24% chance of danger. Um, André pays us. That's really nice armor you have there. Okay, because he's ambitious, deceitful. You make him see reason and join our court. You know what? Need the money. So we're just going to take the money. Tempting fruit. Danger. Our road takes us through treacherous parts of Valence. While I scan for any dangers ahead, a rustling bush grabs my attention. Could it be a wild animal? As I brace myself for impact, Nicholas jumps out of the bush instead, holding a plant. You scared me, Nicholas. Anyway, let me see what you have there. Have here some kind of fruit? I exclaim. Yes, it looks and smells so delicious. I wonder what it tastes like. Maybe I'll just... Uh, I'll take just a little bite. Uh, hold on. What if it's poisonous? You gain unknown plant rash for five years, possibly. Let him eat it. Only if I try it first. Yeah, like, I'm gonna try it first. Yeah, sure, go ahead and eat it. So gain 100 lifestyle. Alright, we are at the hunting camp. Excellent. As we await the, await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Count Raoul has started on preparations. His gamekeepers check the grasslands each day for sign of quarry while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds. A bird grows restless waiting, knowing it will soon be unleashed. Soon. Let's see, what do we want to do here? Murder? Befriend? Um, let's see, is there a target to befriend? Ooh, the king. The king is here. Count Emmanuel of Emmandois. Count Joffrey. Nah, not our count. You know, let's suck up to the king. Why not? Hunt by the wing. Mayor Lothar. Lota assembles the party as the sun rises over the camp in the plains near Isodun. With any luck, we'll find a bevy of pheasants, and our falcons will have great sport. The beaters' teams are ready with their hounds, and a well-appointed spot has been selected. Let's get out there. Prestige. Okay. Let's go. Alright, let's see what this is. Waiting for word from the scent hounds, the party rests in a shaded copse. Philippe stands not far off. This is my chance to impress him. King Philippe, how are you? It's not often we get a chance to talk. I open informally. He seems surprised, but not hostile to my conversation. There's nothing better than a good hunt. My words don't seem to have made much of an impact on King Philippe, for he says, nothing. Sitting alone after he has moved on to chat with others, I feel foolish. Well done, Fulk. So we lose 10 opinion. Great. Count Rose, Game Masters, signal the time, the, the party to push. We have arrived at the release spot. From our vantage point, we can see several tawny pheasants strutting about the leafy bushes ahead. The beaters will soon be in position, ready to spook the game to flight. The party halts as we prepare to remove our birds' hoods and set them, one by one, to their sport. It's time. Two in the bush. I watch excitedly as my falcon identifies a target and takes wing from its watch, soaring high into the air. The pheasants are none the wiser as my falcon scans the ground from high above. Time and again, my falcon swoops in for a kill, but misses, retreats, or only grazes its target. After hours of attempts, the game have all but disappeared. The falcon is near exhausted and the light is fading. A shame. The hunt fails. Hmm. 
And we are empty handed. I do gain the trait Hunter, and this is the end of it. It's time. Let us leave the adventure behind for now and finish the hunt. So every parting guest gained 187 prestige. That's nice. You gain three trait experience in Falconer. Excellent. At long last, I am finally home. There's nothing better than arriving back into a lane after a long journey. The caravan master Stefan reports that we have journeyed for 91 days and traversed five baronies. Thank God I can go inside again. Regency has ended. And the uh, countess has gained some prestige. Anything new popping up here? We could do our own hunt, but I'm not going to do that for right now. Looks like well, we could petition our liege. There's really nothing to do there. Pay homage. Nope, we're just going to continue on for now. But I think this is a good place after our first hunt. A hunt to remember? I don't know about that, but it was our first hunt. Uh, to end today's episode, if you enjoyed it, not a lot has happened. I do realize that, but we have Joffrey. We've got a full cousin heir. That is very, very important. It is Joffrey of House Anjou. And to push forward for the building of the Angevin Empire and Dynasty. We'll keep an eye on what uh, Joffrey does over here, who is married but has no children as of yet. So, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't produce an heir. So, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the links down in the description below to also my Patreon where you can join it multiple different tier levels. So until next time, I'm Ram Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Ooh.